Yo, what's up guys? We're back today for our UU Live, our Tuesday UU Live. Now, I know I missed an upload yesterday. It was supposed to be OU. I actually uh, recorded a video, a couple of videos, an OU Live and a Battle Factory Live with a friend of mine, Survive9. I'll try to leave a link in the description to his channel. He's a phenomenal battler, great player. Uh, we got a couple of wins. It was really cool live, great having somebody on again. But unfortunately, Camtasia decided that because of my processing power on my PC, that it wouldn't sync up my audio and his audio, so I lost pretty much. It would have taken about four hours to correct everything and put his audio cues, basically everything that he said, into place. I didn't want to waste the time on that. I told him that when I got a better PC, we would re-record, so we'll pretty much leave it at that. I hate missing an upload, but it shouldn't happen again. Should, should try to keep the schedule for Mondays, but anyway, we're back today here for a UU Live. I'll stop rambling, and uh, we've got a team that I made. It's a really cool uh, offensive Rosary team. With, uh, with Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Hidden Power Ground to be able to hit a lot of its checks, and uh, Dazzling Gleam, so that's uh, obviously to hit Hydreigons, to hit Salamences, things like that, so that's pretty good. Uh, we've got Bandidente over here, Standard Bandidente, Extreme Speed of course. Uh, Aerodactyl with Taunt, Aqua Tail, and Aerial Ace, uh, this is pretty much my only water move on the team. Uh, gets rid of common switch-ins to Aerodactyl, such as uh, Defensive, Crocodile and stuff like that, so that's very nice. I have an E-belted Jolteon right, right here, which is really nice because a lot of Swamperts think they can switch in freely on Shadow Balls and things like that. And then pretty much get KO'd by Hidden Power Grass afterwards, so don't like to be choice locked with this thing. We've got a Rock Setter over here being his Elf with uh, Stealth Rocks, U-Turn, Zen Headbutt, which is really nice, and uh, Explosion, of course, as a Sashed as Elf should always have. And then we have our Wish Passing Sylveon, this is pretty much the key to the team. This was a Vaporeon before, but I needed a check to, uh, to Salamence basically dry, uh, spamming uh, Outrage. So I needed to, uh, to get a Fairy on the team, switch it out for uh, Sylveon. They have relatively the same amount of bulk, uh, whereas Sylveon doesn't have as much defense, of course, but it has more spadef, so it pretty much balances out. It's kind of a weird EV spread, I'm going to try this out for once. We've got Hyper Voice, Wish Protect, Baton Pass. The reason this is so good is because I can uh, Baton Pass, slow Baton Pass Wishes into either Roserade or Weakened Aerodactyl. Roserade takes a lot of Life Orb damage, so it's nice to bring it back up. This thing actually outspeeds a lot of stuff, being uh, base... Uh, base 90, so it's it's really good in this tier. And uh, if you didn't know, it gets Technician, so Hidden Power Ground is actually base 90. That's a really good move. So uh, we'll jump right into it here. We'll get a, a battle as soon as we can. I see a, sus a suspect test here on UU. I don't exactly know what they're suspect testing. They haven't announced it yet. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say either Conkelder or uh, something like Celebi, but we'll see as time goes on. So we got a team here. Uh, we got Conkelder, as you can see there. Uh, Swampert. Uh, Bronzong, which can be a little bit of a problem, but I do have the Entei. Uh, Hidden Power Ground can't hit it, so unfortunately that's pretty much going to wall the majority of our team. Got a nice uh, E-Belted Jolteon to deal with it, though, so I'm not too worried. Uh, he actually does not have a Jolteon switch in. I'm just going to drop a Have Fun for him, because he did as well. And uh, I'm actually just going to lead his Elf, try to get up my rocks as soon as possible. He leads Conkelder, which is perfectly fine. He can knock us off into Mock Punch. I might just want to get some damage off on this thing. Then again, the rest of my team deals with it pretty nicely. So uh, I am just... He does have a Spinner, though, being Tentacruel. How do we check that reliably? If Entei's in and his, his Tentacruel comes in, then it could be a problem. I'm actually just going to get damage off on this thing. And as I headbutt it, hope for a flinch. As we do get the flinch, actually, which is pretty crazy. And uh, I'll be able to... Uh, I'll be able to Zen Headbutt again, honestly. Got no reason not to. I don't think he has anything on his team that actually outspeeds me barring a Scarf Kirin. So I can get up rocks after. As uh, he is going to switch here into his Reuniclus, good play. He's going to be able to take that like nothing. I am just going to get up my rocks here. He can Shadow Ball if he wants. He actually chooses to go for a Calm Mind, good play. And uh, I'll be able to U-turn, I think, into... Hmm, do I just want to explode here? No, I still have my Sash intact. I'll just U-turn out. See how much it does. Should do a relatively good amount, something like 25 to 30. Even if he is Fizz Def, this thing has a lot of attack, so. Might even do more, I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. So, I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> it's kinda late, guys. Um, uh, yeah, so how much did that do? Hold on, I'm gonna move this thing. Uh, 34%, so roughly in the, uh, in the range that we said it would. Uh, he might just recover off the damage here, predicting that. Um, yeah, I have no dark types. Um, I don't know what to do switch into this thing honestly uh calm mind psychic's gonna do a lot to arrow uh i think i just gotta go for it though i'm gonna go to aerodactyl because it doesn't serve too much of a purpose in the rest of the game to be perfectly honest uh he's gonna go for a calm mind right here and uh i'm just gonna go for the taunt 
to keep him from recovering up. And then we're going to fire off a stone edge on this guy, so... Uh, try to get off as much damage as possible, and we do get off a good 36% Psyshock is not going to be able to knock us out And we'll be able to follow up the Stone Edge with an Aerial Ace and knock out his Runiclus Aer uh, That crit didn't matter, uh, an Aerial Ace would have taken him out, so uh, At least I got the counter to my entire team down to 8% Oh yeah, totally, the counter to your entire team, this thing does nothing to his team He has a Bronzong and, a, and probably a defensive Tentacruel Skunk Elder's weak, but it doesn't really matter uh, I'm just going to go for Aqua Tail right here, because he is going to Mega Evolve. Try to get off as much damage as possible. Nice, clean 38. Uh, and uh, he's going to knock us out with the Waterfall. But again, I didn't really need that, as uh, now I can just... Uh, if I go into Roserade, he's just going to switch into Bronzong. So I kind of want to predict that, and then double into Entei. Seems to be my play. So I'm going to go Roserade, and I'm going to predict him to switch out into Bronzong and double into Entei. Hopefully this works out, and he doesn't go for a random Waterfall right here, or an Earthquake. And... Uh, it does, so he actually goes into Conkelder, which isn't too bad as I'll be able to e-speed this thing. I uh, don't really want to take a Mach Punch, so we'll just be able to knock out the Conk right here. As he goes into Tentacruel, he can spin now, but if he spins, he's going to basically uh, take a lot of damage from Jolteon, so uh, we'll do that. And uh, we'll just fire off a Thunderbolt here, because like I said before, I am e-belted, so if he wants to go into Swampert, that's perfectly fine. I think his best switch is actually to go into Kirim here. That's uh, going to take a little bit of damage, as always the para, uh, the para chance, so... I don't really mind that too much, and uh, we do have a Sylveon, which is uh, not specially defensive, but it should be able to take this thing on barring specs, so I'm just going to go into that, and if he wants to sub up, then I'll be able to get off a free Hyper Voice behind his sub, and that'll be good times, so this guy's talking a lot, I'm actually going to ignore him, uh, yeah, he chooses to go for an Ice Beam right there, that's good for us, uh, I'm going to ignore uh, players right here, and uh, there we go, all good. And we're just going to go for a Wish right now, as he's probably going to switch, yeah, into Bronzong, exactly. I think I am faster than Bronzong, so I've got a pretty safe Baton Pass here out into Entei. Uh, hopefully he doesn't status me, as he goes for Rocks, which is great. And uh, now I'm free to Sacred Fire, honestly. Uh, how much is his Tentacruel at? 94? So if we get a burn off on that thing, that's amazing. He actually chooses to stay in with his Bronzong and take the Sacred Fire, so now he doesn't really have a good switch into, uh, well, to anything, really. <laughs> uh, to Roserade, mostly. Uh, Tentacruel is not bad because it does have Liquid Ooze, so it can definitely do some damage, but that's what Hidden Power Ground is for. I'm not sure if I just want to weaken this thing or just go into a Zelf. I think a Zelf might be my best play because I can fire off a, uh, a Zen Headbutt afterwards. Uh, and he can't knock me out with anything, so definitely going a Zelf right here. Uh, is he's going to actually double in his Kirim. Not bad, not bad. He might be Scarfed. Uh, I'd rather find out now. Uh, I can actually also run a Calc to see how much he did to Sylveon. Kirim... Let's see what, what choice specs damage does here uh, against Sylveon. We are bold. Oh, that's not how you spell Sylveon. Sylveon. There we go. And uh, I don't know why choice specs is the only set here now, but I'm going to... Uh, that's about right. Yeah, and we'll put 68 Spideff in here. His Ice Beam should have done about that, so I think I'm pretty sure he is... Uh, I had Sylveon sets open there. I'm pretty sure he's specs, so I'm just going to explode right here. And uh, do a heck of a lot of damage to his Kirim right there. And now we can just go into Jolteon and fire off Thunderbolts at this point. And uh, we'll be able to knock out his Kirim right here. And if his Swampert wants to come in, then we get off a Hidden Power Grass on that thing and knock it out. And I'm pretty sure Jolteon just cleans up the game now, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just going to go for Hidden Power Grass here. It's going to be able to knock out the Swampert. And uh, Tentacruel last, so... That's, uh, that's a pretty good game right there. Didn't even have to show off Roserade, which I kind of wanted to, but uh, that's fine. That's okay. We do get a para right there. I don't know why he's setting up Toxic Spikes. It doesn't really matter at this point. Any forfeits on the last turn. Once again, I don't understand why people do this, but whatever. Uh, we'll just get another game right here. And uh, this guy has a very bulky team between Florges, Donphan, and Tangrowth. This is going to be a little bit difficult to take down, but I do have the Roserade, which actually counters his defensive core completely. I'm just a little bit scared of the Houndoom, so... Uh, again, I do have Hidden Power Ground, and I think we outspeed Houndoom before Mega, do we? Hold on. Houndoom. Uh, let's say, are you Nasty Plot? Uh, no, we do not. Not a max speed. He could, he could be Jolly, though. He could be Jolly. I'm not expecting it, but he could be. Um, I kind of just want to lead... Do I lead a Zelf again? Um... I'm thinking actually Sylveon might be my best lead because he doesn't have a good switch into a Specs hidden uh, to a Specs Hyper Voice and he might think we're Specs right off the bat. So I'm just gonna lead Sylveon here. 
I uh, was not expecting Tangrowth as a lead, to be perfectly honest, because his elf could have just U-turned out of there. He might be a Rocky Helmet, but I'm just going to go for a Hyper Voice here. I don't really care if he Sledge Bombs me. That does a lot. Whoa, and he misses the Sleep Powder. That's really unfortunate for him, as uh, another Hyper Voice would be able to take him out. So I'm actually... No, I'm just going to go for it, because these guys stay in all the time. So I'm just going to go for another Hyper Voice right there. He's not going to keep his Regenerator Mon for whatever reason. We are a little bit lower ladder, guys, because... Uh, like I said before, this is a new suspect test ladder, so uh, I got reset on that, but he's going to go into Toxicroak. Um, Aerodactyl's okay here. I don't have a really good switch into this thing, so I think uh, Arrow is pretty much my only play at this point, and I'll just be able to fire off an Aerial Ace after. He actually misses Gunk Shot. That's really unfortunate. That sucks, man. Sorry, but uh, nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. He doesn't have a really good switch into Arrow, barring Dawn Fan, but I can just Aqua Tail that thing and two hit KO'd, I believe. Uh, and Aerial Ace is going to be able to take out his Toxic Croak. He might just have wanted to get a safe switch into Dawn Fan, but he is going to forfeit there. Uh, we are up to 12.05 here on the ladder. Uh, like I said before, it's not too high, but it's what we're on. This is uh, this is all I could do. I got some points before starting to, uh, to record, but there's only so much I can do. So this guy has a very Jolteon weak team from what I can see. Um, he can't para me with this thing. He has to get speed boosts up with his Sharpedo. So, Sharpedo's actually a pretty big threat now that I don't have, um, well, Sylveon can take a hit. But now that I don't have Vaporeon on the team, uh, Sharpedo's definitely a threat. So, I'm just gonna lead his elf here. Uh, seems like my best lead. He's gonna lead Tornadus. He could Prankster taunt me, I guess. Uh, so I'm actually just gonna go for a U-turn right here as he does not taunt, okay. And uh, Jolteon is safe. Safe as safe can be, honestly. Uh, he might go for a knockoff. He actually chooses to go for a U-turn, which is perfectly fine. I'm assuming Darmanitan is going to come in here, as it's the only thing that outspeeds me because it's mo more than likely Scarfed. And uh, he's probably just going to go for a U-turn here. Uh, pretty much I can cover any option with, uh, with Aerodactyl and then outspeed whatever else comes out afterwards. So... That's perfectly fine, just gonna go into Arrow. This is why I have Sylveon for Wish Support, as you can see those two just got weakened pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if I want to risk this thing being uh, Stone Edge, like the Swords Dance variant. Not sure if I can actually do that, but uh, I don't really have another play. I don't have a very good switch into this thing either, so I'm just gonna go for Aerial Ace, see how much it does. Doesn't seem to do too much. I could have taunted him there, but it's not a big deal. As I said before, Sylveon's Wish Passing is, uh, is very, very handy. And I'm just gonna go for another Aerial Ace here, weaken his Cobalion, which is a big threat. He's gonna Volt Switch out. It's gonna do a lot. I basically can't switch into uh, to Rocks anymore. Uh, I think the Wish goes after Stealth Rock damage, so... I will be able to get off another hit here unless he goes into Darmanitan or Alligator though, so that's not too bad. Uh, he could even go Sharpedo, to be honest. Um, but he chooses to go Whimsicott. Okay, strange play, but I'll take it. Uh, he might want to Memento me to get in his Sharpedo for free. That could be a play. Uh, I'm just going to Aerial Ace, though. And we are not going to be able to knock out the Whimsicott thanks to its Focus Sash. He's going to go for Moonblast, which is okay. I don't mind that at all, honestly. Uh, as now I'm going to get up my rocks, I believe. I am slightly slower than his Whimsicott, though. It's base 116 speed. So I don't know how I feel about that play completely. Um, Zelf. Zelf is still an all-around good play because he can't knock me out with any one hit. So I'm just going to go for rocks here. He's going to go for Tailwind. Perfectly fine. And uh, he's going to be able to outspeed us this turn. But nothing he goes for hurts Rosary too much. I do want to keep a Zelf because it actually puts in work. Uh, on his uh, Cobalion. He can still knock it out and stuff, so I'm just going to go Roserade here. Seems like a fine play, as he won't be able to do too much damage to us, as you can see, 24. Uh, he is going to go f uh, before us on this turn, but I'm pretty free to just Giga Drain here. He's going to go for Memento, so he's. I think he's going to try to set up with his... with his what? Um, nothing really. It's not like he has a Slurpuff or anything like that, but goes into Sharpedo here, and um, I'm just going to go straight into Sylveon, honestly. Uh, that's probably my best play. He's more than likely going to, yeah, crunch right here, so uh, that's perfectly fine. As we can just fire off a big Hyper Voice. I can also Protect if I choose to. I'm just afraid. Does this thing get Swords Dance? I don't, I don't, I don't think it does. Uh, I'm pretty free to Hyper Voice. That's fine. Uh, he's going to go into Cobalion and sack it, which is good. I'm going to protect on his Darmanitan to see what it's going to lock itself into, as he is going to go for Flare Blitz right here, so I don't have a really good switch into this. 
Uh, I could choose to go into my Entei here as Entei... Well, Entei does beat the Sharpedo late game with E-Speed. So I don't know if I want to do that necessarily. Um, alternatively, do I have another play? Uh, this thing just destroys me because I don't have a Scarf or <laughs> like, this is This is pretty bad. Uh, I didn't really plan for Scarfs. So his team is pretty much counter team to mine at this point. Uh, his Cobalion is gone, so his Elf doesn't do too much. I'm just going to sack it off to get a little bit of recoil on this Darmanitan. As he goes for Flare Blitz again, as you can see. And uh, now it comes in at 30, so that's pretty good. Just going to go Entei right here. And I think just Sacred Fire? Is that my play? Because if he goes for Flare Blitz, the Sacred Fire knocks him out. So I have a chance of getting a burn on his for, for Alligator, which also is also really good. It's a 50% burn chance. So don't get it right there, but I am faster than his for Alligator. So unless he goes for a... Yeah, as you can see. Uh, we do not get the burn once again, unfortunately. So our Entei is going to go down. And I think we pretty much just get wrecked by that Darmanitan now, unfortunately. Um, what I'm going to do is go into Jolteon here. And I'm just going to throw out a Thunderbolt. And Sylveon pretty much has to 1v1 the rest of his team, which isn't too big of a feat to accomplish. Uh, he goes for a Aqua Jet there, obviously it's not going to knock us out as you can see. And uh, I was hoping to get a little more recoil off on Darmanitan, unfortunately. Um, he has, he's going to choose to go into Sharpedo though. Okay, interesting. Um, he's probably just going to protect here, so that's fine. I'm just going to throw off Thunderbolts, that's okay. I don't care if he protects. Uh, he could be predicting us to be Scarfed, but he does not. Okay. And uh, we pretty much have to go into Sylveon here and click Wish, I think, uh, is the correct play. Yeah, I'm going to click Wish. He's going to go for Destiny Bond, so I'm going to get that Wish off. And uh, is he even Mega? Like, what is he? He's Crunch, Protect, Waterfall, and Destiny Bond. So I'm just going to Protect right here on whatever he wants to go for. He goes for another D-Bond, which is okay. Uh, I'm just going to throw up another Wish. Perfectly fine by me. He has to be Mega, right? He can't be anything else. Um, I'm going to Baton Pass right here. If he chooses to Waterfall, that's bad because then we really have nothing for his Darmanitan. But he actually goes straight into it. So I'm going to Baton Pass into my Roserade here. And pretty much, um, if he goes for Flare Blitz, I'm not sure he goes down to Recoil. But we could also technically be fast no there's no way we're faster he's definitely scarfed uh just gonna go for sludge bomb right here he's gonna go for, for flare blitz and he's not gonna go down to recoil unfortunately so i'm gonna have to go into sylveon and really hope that he doesn't knock me out with this as he does unfortunately so that's uh that's gonna be the end of that game i had nothing for darmanitan unfortunately uh we played aerodactyl a little bit badly but that's uh that's what we get for throwing teams together <laughs> randomly as well so we're just going to try to get one last one here. This is a suspect test ladder, so there might be more people on even though it's late, which would be uh, which would be great. I think we already got three games, but I'm, I think one of them was a forfeit, so I'm not even going to count that. Uh, this guy has a team that Rose Raid can deal with, definitely. Like, the only bad lead for me is Rotom Heat. Everything else, Rose Raid can pretty much handle. Well, I mean, I don't have HP Fire either, so uh, the... The fortress is a little bit of an issue, but let's see here. What do I want to lead with? Um, I think just Sylveon and Wish on his Volt Switch is the correct play. As he actually chooses to go for a Will-O-Wisp, so that's great. And uh, I'm going to go straight into Entei here, I think, is the play. Yeah, I'm going into Entei. And uh, if he chooses to Willow, if he chooses to Volt Switch, nothing really matters because I'm going to get all my health back. And he's going to choose to go into Nidoking right here, which kind of telegraphs Scarfed. Uh, do I take out Nidoking with a Bandit Flare Blitz? Possibly. UU Wallbreaker versus Entei. Oh, once again. Now it's my keyboard that's lagging great. Alright, so uh, Flare Blitz does knock him out. Sacred Fire also knocks him out, so I could risk him being Scarfed right here, and I think I'm going to go for that, as we do drop the Nido King, which is great. That's one less thing to worry about for the rest of the team. That could actually take on Roserade and even Sylveon, so that was kind of worrisome. He's going to choose to go into his Gator here. I'm going to go into Roserade, I believe, is my play. 
on his DD. He's probably going to Dragon Dance, right? Yeah, so I'm going to go into Roserade here. If he chooses to Waterfall, that's great. He's going to go for Dragon Dance, and I'm going to be able to get a Life Orb uh, Giga Drain off. I don't know. Well, he could have Ice Punch, so we could be dead right here, but that's okay. That's fine. I can pretty much clean him up with a uh, with an E-Speed from Entei after exploding with his Elf. So we're only going to lose potentially two Pokemon here, which is awesome. <laughs> it's still more than I'd like, but... Uh, we'll see what he wants to do here. He might not even have the Ice Punch. He might be uh, Waterfall, uh, Aqua Jet. No, he does have the Ice Punch. All right. So that's going to knock us out. And um, Jolteon's definitely not faster unless he's Adamant. I think even Adamant outspeeds us, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, I think his Elfin just explodes the play. I don't know how much he actually takes from it, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to get off a lot of damage, and I think that'll put him in E Speed range, hopefully. Um, not. 100% sure, but I hope so. Doesn't get the defense drop. All right, cool. So yeah, that definitely puts him in E-Speed range, which is great. And uh, we're just gonna go for that. So here goes. And we'll be able to out-prioritize his Aqua Jet if that's what he's carrying. And goodbye for Alligator. There we go. So that's another threat down. And uh, I did have to lose two Pokemon for that, unfortunately. The Slurp Puff becomes a little bit of an issue, but he actually chooses not to go into, into it directly, which is great. And uh, here I can just go. I'm actually just going to go Sylveon, and uh, he's going to Toxic anyway, which is great. I'm going to go for the Wish right here, and I'm going to Baton pass it into Entei, basically, and see what he wants to do, because I'm pretty sure that he would go into Rotom on that, but we'll see as he chooses to go for a Volt Switch, which is awesome, because he doesn't have a good switch to this. Uh, he chooses to go Rotom Heat. I'm just going to Stone Edge this thing, honestly. I can just wish past this back later, so I'm not concerned. Just going to go for the Stone Edge there. It's going to leave him at 8%, which is E-Speed range. He's going to go for the Volt Switch. He knows I'm locked into Stone Edge, but it's not a problem. As, uh, I'm pretty sure I can clean up with Arrow. As long as I get a little bit of damage off on the Slurpuff, I'm, I should be good. So here, here I'm just going to go right back out into Sylveon. It's perfectly fine. He goes for a Toxic again. That's not going to work. I'm just going to Wish here. And uh, he could take advantage of that by going into Slurpuff. But Hyper Voice does a lot. I know that much. And he's going to go for a Volt Switch on this turn. Good play on his part. He might want to go into his Rotom here. I might just stay in this time, depending on what he goes into. Oh yeah, I'm definitely staying in on this thing, and I'm just Hyper Voicing. <laughs> Definitely. He goes for Belly Drum right there. He is faster than us, so he is going to get it off. And we are going to get off a huge Hyper Voice right here. And that puts him in E-Speed range, so we're pretty much good. Uh, I do not want to sack this, though. I do not want this to die. Because this is what gets Entei's health back up. So, I think Jolteon is Jolteon is definitely the sack. It does nothing versus Sceptile, so... Uh, we are just going to let that go down. And we're going to go right back out into our Entei. If he wants to save his Slurpluff, that's fine by me. I'm just going for E-Speed and knocking this thing out if I can. If he wants to go into Fortress, cool. He's just going right back into Sylveon, so... And now he can't Belly Drum, so this thing isn't that much of a threat anymore. And, uh, Sylveon plus Entei pretty much 1v1s his team. As long as I can keep getting Wishes into Entei. Which I think are big enough to heal him up even from 75, uh, uh, even from 25, I mean. Um... He could Gyro Ball right here. I'm kind of scared of that. At the same time, not really. Um, he's just going to go for Volt Switch on this turn. Good play, I guess. Uh, I can still just... I can live any hit from this. He's probably going to want to Pain Split. Um, yeah, I'm just going for Wish. That's fine. He can Pain Split all he wants. As uh, now I'm going to... I think I need this thing's health, right? So I'm just going to switch directly into Entei? How much did, did we see how much Volt Switch did to us on Entei at any point? I did, I think it did like 25% though, so that's not, maybe not the best play. I'm just gonna go for Baton Pass, he's gonna go for Volt, and uh, this is gonna be uh, Entei's last run here. I basically have to clean up with Aerodactyl, and I think I might be able to do that considering his Fortress probably doesn't have Gyro Ball if he's never gone for it at this point. So I'm just going to Baton Pass here into Entei one last time. Going to go for Sacred Fire. We have the Sylveon as a sack at any point. And uh, his Fortress can definitely live this, obviously, because of the Sturdy. 
but his Rotom decides to come in and take a huge Sacred Fire, and it's not going to be able to take another one, so Rotom's going to go down here. I am going to save Entei if his Sceptile comes in, I think, because I think we die to a Dragon Pulse, so... This is a little bit of a bad spot. I think he thought he could take the Sacred Fire with Rotom, which is obviously not the case because he didn't heal up enough. Um, I want to calc to see if Sceptile's Dragon Pulse takes us out, because if it doesn't, then I'm definitely staying in. Uh, UU All Out Offensive versus Entei, we're already on Entei. Dragon Pulse does 60 max, 61 max, excuse me. That was, uh, that was my YouTube open right there. And, uh, had a dubstep <laughs> mix going. I was playing some, uh, some NHL with some friends. You guys already know that I'm a big hockey fan from the, uh, Montreal Hapsalls. And, uh, playing some background music there. Didn't want to advertise that. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. He's gonna bring in his Sceptile. His Sceptile, I think, will go down to a banded Sacred Fire. I'm not sure. Uh, Sacred Fire on Mega Sep. Yeah, it definitely goes down. Oh, yeah. So he needs to crit the... He needs to crit the Dragon Pulse right here to be able to win. So let's see if he does. He does not, and as long as we land this, we're good. We do, and goodbye, Sceptile. And uh, as long as we don't miss on the Fortress as well, we're good to go. So here comes the Sacred Fire. We do hit. Do we burn him? This would end the game right here, and we do. So that's going to be a dead Fortress, and uh, that's going to be the game. That's going to wrap up the live, guys, as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. It was a pretty cool team. We did get one loss, but, I mean, again, I threw it together, uh, as I do with every other team, so it's all good. Uh, I like it. I like using Roserade in this uh, in this tier. I uh, didn't put in too much work, and Tay obviously put in a lot more work than uh, than my Roserade, but I think uh, Entei and Jolteon probably get the thumbnail on this one. You guys let me know what you think, but uh, if you enjoyed, hit that like button down below as always. Subscribe if you want to see more in your sub boxes. Leave a comment down below if you have anything you want to ask about any one of the Pokemon we used. If you want to hop on board for a live, obviously you're going to need to wait until I get a new PC, but let me know nonetheless. And again, thanks for watching, guys. Ciao.